You guys know my feeling about the modern web. It's slow, it's bloated, it's not secure, it's not private, it's just horrible. And I've been looking for an alternative internet protocol to use other than the standard web protocols, HTTP, HTTPS. And in the past, I've done videos about how to set up a Gopher server and create your own Gopher hole, your Gopher website, if you will. And Gopher is really neat, but the problem with Gopher is it was created in the early 1990s, and it's not really being developed anymore. It's kind of a dead protocol. You know, there's not really a lot of development around Gopher servers and Gopher clients, and it's kind of limited. You know, I wanted something that's actually modern, something that's created, you know, recently that is an actual viable alternative to the modern web, but without all the bloat. And I found that solution. That solution is called Gemini. So recently on a chat with my patrons, I do a monthly chat with my patrons, and well, we were discussing alternative web protocols, and I put out the challenge to the people that were on that particular conference call with me. Hey, let's all throw up a small website using an alternative web protocol other than HTTP. So things like Gemini, DAT, Quick, uh, you know, th all those alternative protocols that people have been hearing about here in the last few weeks or few months. I was like, let's, let's all go out and try one. And it's almost like clockwork. I start looking around for information on some of these and I notice Hex DSL. You guys know the Hex DSL channel on YouTube? Great YouTuber. Make sure you subscribe to his channel if you're not already subscribed. He does a lot of Linux content, Linux gaming content. He does uh, terminal stuff, tiling window manager stuff on occasion. And he did this video with his friend Drew about the Gemini protocol. The title is The Modern Web is Terrible, The Small Web is Better. And they talk a little bit about the, uh, the Gemini protocol. Which, uh, according to the website for Project Gemini, they claim they're trying to find a middle space between what Gopher was and what the modern web is. I uh, actually think that's not really what they're doing. They're not finding a, a middle ground. They're actually much, much closer to Gopher than the modern web. So Gopher... I've done videos about Gopher in the past. I've set up my own Gopher hole in the past. And Gopher is really just plain text. Uh, you have to view it in very old Gopher clients like Lynx. The Lynx browser actually is a Gopher client. And it, when, that's kind of what Gemini is. Gemini is nothing but plain text, very similar to Gopher. Like Gopher, it's probably best used in a terminal client, a terminal uh, browser client, because when you're just dealing with plain text, why do you want a graphical application, right? I just want to be able to view it in a terminal or in a TTY. And when everything's plain text, it makes it much more configurable and customizable, because unlike modern web pages that are served up to you to look a certain way, when you're just dealing with plain text, you have your own color schemes and you define the fonts and the font size and all of that. And you can really make it look the way you want to look. You know, it's much more customizable that way. When everything's just plain text, you know, it can be what you want it to be uh, when it's served up to you. Like Gopher, Gemini is not going to have any client-side scripting, so we're not going to really have anything like a, no JavaScript, you know, no ads of any kind, nothing like that. You know, very similar to Gopher, you know, Gemini is just plain text, so none of the whiz-bang effects and all of that. Uh, you can have server-side scripting. You can do some stuff with CGI. I have been on some Gemini sites that did have search forms, and you could actually use those search forms to, you know, do a search on the web or whatever it is you, that, that you were trying to do with that particular search search form. So you can do some server side stuff, but all the uh, client side stuff that these days, many of us that are privacy and security oriented are trying to block on our browsers, our web browsers. You don't really have to worry about any of that stuff with Gemini. Also, Gemini, much like Gopher, it doesn't support inline links. So I can't, you know, like have a link in the middle of a paragraph, you know, the way this web page, this is a web page we're viewing, such as this link here on the word client. I can't do something like that in Gemini. I couldn't do something like that in Gopher. In, in Gemini and Gopher, you have to have your links on their own separate line, one link to its own line. That's all you could ever do with links, and that's all you're ever going to be able to do with links on uh, Gemini, because it really forces you to format your, your text and your pages properly, uh, because you can get really sloppy when you can just throw a link anywhere on a document. So that was one of the really nice things I liked about Gopher, and it's one of the things I like about Gemini, is that the links have to be on their own separate lines, and you can't have inline links. You're also not going to have uh, inline images and video and all of that stuff. Again, very similar to what the old Gopher protocol is. We're just dealing 
with plain text here. If you have a link that links to an image or a video, you know, it's going to open up our program to display that image or video for you. For example, in Linux, if I clicked on a, a video, it would probably launch MPV to play that video for me instead of trying to play it uh, in a browser, which is what the modern web browsers do. They try to do too much, right? They don't follow the Unix philosophy. Because if you're following the Unix philosophy, a web browser should not be playing a video. Your video player should be playing that video, right? So that's one of the things I really like about Gemini. Let me show you a little bit of Gemini in action. So let me switch over to my desktop here and I'm going to launch a terminal and let me zoom in a little bit. And I installed uh, several different Gemini clients on my system. The first one I'm going to show you is one called Amphora. And this is one of the ones that they discussed on the Hex DSL video. So I, I tried it out. It's a terminal Gemini client. And I'm going to go to Gemini colon slash slash distro dot tube because that is my Gemini site or what they call uh, Gemini capsules. So Gopher had Gopher holes. The web has websites. Gemini has Gemini capsules. And of course, referring to them as capsules is uh, a tribute to the old Gemini space project, you know, the rockets that we launched that the U.S. did. There was a, a series of Gemini launches back in the 1960s, 1970s. A matter of fact, I, the very first Gemini launch was in 1965, and the port that Gemini uses is port 1965. So there, there's a lot of references to Gemini, the uh, space program. And just looking at my personal Gemini site here, this is just something very quick and dirty that I threw up here. Uh, you can see it's plain text. It's very similar to Gopher, and it just looks nice. Plain text always looks nice. I have some pre-formatted text here where I just did something fancy with distro.tube because that's the, the URL. Uh, remember, the protocol, though, is not HTTP colon slash slash. It's Gemini colon slash slash distro dot tube. And then I did a welcome and the welcome is standard markdown. I did uh, a single hash symbol for a top level heading and then the word welcome. And then I wrote some plain text. Nothing else, just some plain text. I'll actually show you the plain text file here. It actually doesn't look very different than how it's displayed on the page here. And then I did some links and the links have a number out to the side of them in the Amphora client here. If I just hit a uh, one on the keyboard, for example, it's going to go to DistroTube on YouTube. What that is, that's a web link to my YouTube page, and it's just going to open that in my browser. You know, it'll open that in uh, whatever my default browser is on the system at the time. Um, uh, I think my default browser was Firefox, but I recently removed Firefox from my system, so it actually did not launch that. Or it might have. It may have launched it on a different uh, workspace. Yeah, it launched LibreWolf on a different workspace. Now, the way I set up Amphora, Amphora does have a config file where you can set colors for uh, first level headings, second level headings, uh, links to HTTP pages, links to Gemini pages, because number four is actually a Gemini site. That's the project Gemini site actually as a Gemini site instead of the uh, website we were viewing in LibreWolf earlier. And this is their Gemini capsule here. And if I want to go back here in M4, I type B on the keyboard to go back. And I can go back to the page I was on previously, which was, of course, my page. M4 is probably the best terminal Gemini client because it has a, a nice config file that you can, you know, play with the color scheme and everything. I did try some other ones, though. If I type Q on the keyboard, I can get out of M4. I did install Bombadillo, which is uh, another terminal client. And let's do... Gemini colon slash slash and we'll go to the project Gemini homepage and Bombadillo and you can see it's not as colorful it's just uh, basically in this case a light font on a dark background but it functions very similar to M4 it's just not as colorful so I'd probably use M4 for those of you looking for a graphical Gemini client there is one called Lagrange let me launch Lagrange and this is distro.tube in Lagrange let me uh, reload that because it was a little wonky there. So that's what my site looks like in this graphical Gemini client. And it's graphical, which means it can replace things like, you know, bullet points and things like that with, you know, fancy graphics. Uh, you can adjust the color scheme. It doesn't allow you to do your own custom color scheme, but uh, in, under preferences, I believe. Uh, under style or actually under colors you can do uh, this is the colorful dark theme this is the colorful light theme there is the black theme uh, sepia yeah, that's not too bad high contrast I would probably just stick with the default colorful dark for me so 
Uh, if you need a graphical client, I, I again, I, because it's just plain text, I'm not sure uh, why you just wouldn't use the terminal. But if you want a graphical client, Lagrange is probably the best one. Another graphical client, actually a terminal or a graphical client, depending on how you run Emacs. There is an Emacs client called Elfer. And this allows you to uh, view Gemini pages. Uh, let me open up a URL here. Let's see, we'll go to the Project Gemini website, and this is their website here in Elfer inside Emacs. Let me type G on the keyboard. Let's see if distro.tube is working here inside Elfer in Emacs. Since it's connecting to distro.tube, I did notice I was having a problem with my certificates uh, here. Uh, it says it's retrying with IPv4. Yeah, we're having a problem with uh, a TLS certificate, so it's not working in some of the browsers I'm trying. I need to correct that problem. Now, other than the Gemini clients, if you're going to set up your own Gemini capsule, of course, you need a server. And there's a couple of different servers out there. The one I used was Agate. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it, Agate. Uh, it's very simple to set up your own Gemini server. You basically run that command and run that command. <laughs> so, well, you need to install the program, a gate. It's a Rust program. So you could do cargo install a gate. And then after that, you run this command to generate your TLS certificate and private key. Uh, and then you run the actual a gate command to start the server. And, and that is it. And I can show you this on my system because I need to try to figure out what's going on with my server anyway. So I, I SSH into my machine here and let me CD into slash home slash Gemini is where I stuck everything. And in this particular directory, I have a gate dash start dot SH. That's just a shell script that launches a gate. What that does is it runs this basically. With the settings that I needed to, I needed to edit some of this to make this work correctly. Uh, let me show you. So I'll open this in Vim. Uh, I'm running the sudo uh, a gate command because it needs root privileges to run it. And the content directory is, in my case, slash home slash Gemini slash content. That's just the directory I created to throw my Gemini capsule in. It can be any directory on your system host name. I just did distro.tube. Everything else I left exactly the same as on the website, except one thing I did need to change. This here, dash dash ADDR and then the three colons 1965 did not work for me. It complained, it threw up an error on my server, but if I wrap the first two colons in brackets, that seemed to solve the problem for me, although I'm still getting some errors in certain uh, browsers here, certain uh, uh, Gemini clients, so I'm, I'm, I still need to investigate this matter further here. It could be an IP problem too. I've got IPv4 and IPv6 enabled on this server. Also, it could be a DNS problem from redirecting uh, distro.tube over to these IP addresses. Anyway, I, I created this uh, a gate start script and then with systemd, I enabled a, uh, a gate.service. I created my own system CTL service to always start a gate every time the server is booted up, every time this web server is booted up. That way, you know, if the server ever crashes, hopefully it'll restart itself, or if I just reboot the machine, a gate re restarts itself without me having to SSH into the machine to always restart the server. Let me cd into the content directory that I was talking about. And the content directory has index.gmi. So your Gemini file should end with the extension .gmi. So let me vim index.gmi. And this is the, uh, I guess, the source code, if you will, right? It's just a markdown document. You see the links are equals and then the greater than sign. So it's basically equals, greater than sign, and then the URL for a link, and it can be Gemini links, HTTP links, or whatever protocol, go for it, accepts any kind of link. Just put your link there, and then behind it is the actual title of the link. And let's, to view this side by side, let's do amphora distro.tube again, and you see there's the URL, but it displays distro.tube on YouTube for the link. So that is what we're doing there. The other thing, we can create lists with asterisks, and that's just a bulleted list here, here inside the M4 client. Anyway, I don't want to spend you know, t a terribly long amount of time discussing this. I will say that this was very easy to set up this uh, this Gemini site, this Gemini capsule, getting the uh, gate server installed, 
took like 10 minutes and that 10 minutes, nine and a half minutes of it was compiling a gate because it's a Rust program. I had to compile it from source. I set up a uh, Ubuntu 2004 server and, you know, you just install the gate program and then run those very simple commands to create your uh, RSA key and your certificate for your uh, TLS certificate. And then start the uh, gate server. What I did again, I created a system D service and then enabled that service and started that service. And really this, this is so much easier to set up than a standard web server. You can literally be up and running in 10 minutes with your own Gemini capsule. So what I'm going to do is I no longer have a gopher hole because my gopher hole was gopher colon slash slash distro dot tube. I've since wiped out that server. I, I was going to have a hard time maintaining that gopher hole with my website and everything else. Anyway, I was really thinking about redoing my gopher hole anyway, and it was just perfect timing. Now that I discovered Gemini, I was like, why bother redoing my gopher site? Why not just redo it as a Gemini site? Because Gemini is fresh, it's modern, it looks good. And I wanted to promote one of these new internet protocols on the channel a little bit. I want you guys, if you're interested in creating, especially a simple website, maybe you're just going to throw up a simple blog or, you know, some kind of a diary or something that, you know, where you write uh, some articles or blogs on occasion, you don't really need multimedia, right? You're not going to be adding whiz bang effects and video and all of that to a site. You just do mostly plain text anyway, I would ask you guys to strongly consider Gemini as an alternative because at some point we need to get away from the modern web. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show, Absey, Dallas, Devin, Fran, Gabe, Lou, Corbinian, Mitchell, Akami, Arch, 5530, Chris, Chuck, David, the other David, Donnie, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, Pick, VM, Scott, Wes, and Willie. They are the producers of this episode. Without these guys, I couldn't have made my own Gemini capsule. I couldn't have done it. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. These are all my supporters over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the DistroTube channel, look for DT over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.